And all God's people said, Amen. Very good. I want to welcome each of you here today, and we're glad that uh, we can gather. Last, last uh, Easter, we were unable to do this. And uh, thank God, things we take for granted, right? And so often, uh, uh, it really uh, upsets everything. But we're glad that we're here this morning and that you're here. And uh, what I say is, he is risen. Yeah, that's what it's about. That's the theme of this morning. The theme of every day is, if you're a Christian, it's he is risen. Because he is risen makes all the difference in the world. Whatever comes our way. You know, we don't need to worry because God is greater than all of our problems put together. Amen. So, so we're glad that you're here and uh, that we can uh, uh, give God permission to speak to our hearts and uh, to, uh, he knows exactly where we're at in our journey and he knows uh, whether it's high or low or in between, God knows because he created us and he loves each one of us dearly and he wants to help us if we'll just let go and let God uh, do his thing in our lives and uh, makes all the difference. I'd like to uh, share this morning for our call to worship. And if you'd stand, if you're able to, please. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 28. We find these words. And after the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. And going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, Come. Come and see the place where he laid. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that we can gather on this Resurrection Sunday morning. Oh Lord, and we thank you that uh, death, death cannot contain you. You are greater than all. And we thank you that truly you have risen and you are alive and well. And, and we thank you that we can gather here. Thank you for the invitation for inviting us to be here. And it's not by coincidence. And we might have our reasons for being here, but you have your reasons for us being here as well. And we just thank you. And may we give you permission to speak to our hearts. You know, like I said, you know exactly where we're at in our journey. And you know uh, what we have need of. Maybe even, I'm sure, more than what we, are, we realize. But you are concerned about us and you love us so dearly. And we ask and pray your blessing, your anointing upon this service upon the, the songs, upon the message, upon just gathering together as the family of God. And we just ask your blessing upon this special time. And may we give, O oh Lord, you our attention, that you would uh, touch our, our hearts as well as our ears and our minds, that we would receive what you have for us, that we can leave this place today and say, boy, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I came. And may your blessing be upon us this day. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, join with me as we sing, Because He Lives. Because He Lives, we can face anything, can't we?
Good morning and welcome. Just a couple announcements. Uh, there are some announcements right here in your bulletin uh, and there's also uh, more information on the newsletter. If you did not grab a newsletter last week, there's still some in the North X. It's a two pager. So if you only have one page, you only have half of it. So I would recommend getting the half that is not the same as the one you already got. If you like more information there, uh, we do have uh, weekly services and stuff that are online. Uh, the website is there also as well. For those, some of you have been following along and others have not been able to, but that's where you can connect with us during the week. Uh, there's a 2 a.m. every evening, well, morning, well, whenever you click on it, you will find it, and with some truth and stuff about the, uh, some God's word and, and how it connects with us today. Uh, there will not be a Wednesday night Bible, or sorry, Monday night Bible study tomorrow night um, because of the holiday. And uh, so uh, in, enjoy the time there and make sure you, you connect with, with family and stuff. Thank you for everyone who helped make the Easter egg hunt a success yesterday. Um, I know we did not find all the eggs, but that's the reason why we made sure they were individually packaged. So if I happen to see you wandering around looking for eggs after church, that's okay. You can eat whatever you find. The plastic eggs, yes. That's from two years ago. That's... That, eat it, yes, and have your friend film you eating it, because we will all laugh. Um, the uh, other Stadium Terrace Outreach is on Tuesdays. If you're interested in helping, let us know. It's from about 4 to about 5, and uh, it's a great opportunity to connect with some kids, play some games, tell a Bible story and whatnot. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff happening here. Thank you also for those that decorated with the flowers in the front. Uh, for those who, who purchased them, there's a list up here with your name on it if you purchased them. If you purchased them, you probably know you purchased them. And so come and grab one afterwards and then just cross your name off as you grab yours if you purchased them. Um, thank you also for those that donated the last month. We uh, brought in um, cleaning supplies and personal hygiene items and paper products for the uh, Wimber and Central City Food Banks. Um, thank you. They were overwhelmed with and just said thank you so much. And so this is me passing the thank you back to you guys. Thank you for helping uh, those in our community because um, God is good and we have chances to do that. And um, those are the things. If, uh, as always, if you uh, have kids and want to be connected to the kids stuff that we do, let us know. We send out packets, and we want you to be able to connect on Wednesdays and Sundays. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff happening, and, and we want you to be part of it. So thank you. Oh, and afterwards, there will be food. Some of you saw the food. Some of you ate some food. Some of you would like some more food. And so I'm all about spoiling dinners. And so, because it's not my house, and so, <laughs> sugar them up and send them home. Uh, so we have some food and stuff outside, including some egg bakes. And so let's say, you know, dinner is until 1 or 2, you definitely need a mid-morning snack. So we would like to help you with that. So please uh, stick around for some food afterwards. Thanks. Our uh, offering container is in the back of the... Uh, of the rear of the sanctuary. Uh, as we think about offering, we don't pass plates. Um, but uh, as we think about what, what worship is, uh, is giving. Giving God our time, our attention, giving him you know, more than the time of day. And so what I wanna, wanna encourage us to do is, uh, as I've often said, uh, quite often, is let us count our blessings and name them one by one as the hymn goes, and it will what? Surprise you what God has done, is doing, you know, as we count our blessings. That's a pro part of the problem in our everyday lives is that we get overwhelmed with this or this or this or un unexpected things happening, and, and we don't count our blessings enough. Uh, as I mentioned to somebody that, um, you know, uh, I wonder how many people, just to say thank you, uh, how many people that uh, would love to have been here this morning and are unable to? There are those who are sick or not able to be here, and they're able to come by way of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, YouTube or Facebook or so many different ways they can can uh, pick up on the service. Not quite the same as being here, but at the same time, as we count our blessings, uh, we take for granted, don't we, the blessings that we do have. We take for granted one another oftentimes, you know. I remember once some, someone uh, saying, uh, would always say, uh, you know, if you're going to give me flowers, give them to me now so that I can enjoy them, don't, not after 
I'm, I'm, I've left this body, and, uh, but you know, give me the flowers so I can enjoy them now. And I thought, eh, there's, there's something to be said about that, isn't it? To count our blessings and to, to share God's love and how much we appreciate one another. It's so important. But as we do that, that's what worship is. You know, I remember someone saying, it was, who was critical, uh, I read about a guy who says, oh, who wants to go to church? All they ever talk about is giving, 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 giving. That's all they ever talk about. Well, that's what following Christ is all about, isn't it? It's about giving, giving our time, giving our, our resources, financial resources, but giving people a helping hand. Isn't that what, what it means to follow Christ? That's what giving is. But uh, are there any, uh, just to give a, any thank offerings, anything you're thankful for that you'd like to mention as a part of our offering this morning? Just say it loud enough so we can hear you. <laughs> okay, weather-wise, yes. God's creation, we've seen snow and all kinds of things. So our, our, our um, you know, the, that which we have that God's given us to see the beauty and to experience the joy. Yeah, anything else? I'm thankful that we might be able to have outdoor services soon as it's getting warmer. Oh, that sounds good for many of us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's uh, bow our heads in prayer, shall we? Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you, O Lord, that we can recognize you as who you are and what you have done for us. Oh, how exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think, O Lord, that you provide for us. But so often, O Lord, I think of, of like going into a, going into a, uh, a restaurant and someone says, I'll buy whatever you want and we order a hot dog, or we order something that is just minuscule, oh Lord, and, and, and oh Lord, you, you are the provider of every good and perfect gift, and oh Lord, you're the one that provides us with so much, and yet we settle for so little, for you love us dearly. Lord, may we count our blessings, oh Lord, help us, not just once a week, let's do once a day, count our blessings of of the things that you have done or have done through others into our lives or what, how you've used us to help others. We ask and pray your blessing upon this offering, O oh Lord, offering of our time, O oh Lord, not only today, but also as we journey through this coming week. And also, O oh Lord, as we count our blessings to know that, that um, we also have finances and we have bills to pay as well as ministries in, in this world. We ask and pray your blessing upon the money that is given, the tithes and offerings, that they would multiply, O oh Lord, to, to touch many lives. But, O oh Lord, we just thank you. Thank you that you are the, the provider of all the gifts that, and all that we experience, even the, the breath that we take this moment. We thank you for that breath because it's a gift from you to us. And we just ask and pray your blessing upon this time of giving and may it be an offering of praise and thanksgiving for for how great you are and how much we appreciate your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Now if the children would come forward for our children's story. Welcome, welcome, and there are more that come. So, uh, when Parks was little, we went to visit some friends down south, and I told, and, and well, first of all, that Easter is a lot of stuff, but it's also, there's some good food probably, right? What is one thing you like to eat at Easter time? Yes. Ham. Ham? a good choice yeah candy. candy that's a second course kind of thing yeah sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes. ah yes sir green beans, green beans. nice well uh, we were down south visiting yes sir applesauce apple sauce. Apple sauce. Yeah, potato soup with bacon in it yes that is a good stuff too 
Well, so we were um, down south, and, and Parks was little, and I said to Parks, uh, hey, Parks, you know what we're gonna get? We're gonna get shoe fly pie. Isn't that exciting? Now, some, someone said, mm, I, I heard someone with them mm, out there. Yes, they know what it is. Parks had no clue what that was. Do any of you guys know what shoe fly pie is? Oh, you do, okay. And you might, what, 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 what do you think it is? It's just pie. Are there shoes or flies? It's a kind of pie. Okay, have you ever tried it? No, okay. Have you, have you ever tried shoe fly pie? No, yeah. The name sounds a little scary, but guess what? I said it with such excitement, like, we're going to have shoe fly pie. So Parks was talking to his buddies that were down there with him. He goes, hey, guys. And they were talking about something. He says, hey, guys, guess what? We are going to have shoe fly pie. And those kids, being from the South, had had shoe fly pie. And they said, eh. But Parks goes, but no, it's, it's good. And he said, well, how do, you, how do you know? He says, my daddy said so. And I said, well, this is a good plan. It's not going to last very long, but it's a good plan to trust what your daddy says there. Now, the thing is, this, the what part of the passage that Pastor Nathan's going to talk about today is about the disciples. Jesus said, as I'm going out of here, guys, hey, I'm going to leave you one more little gift here. It's the Holy Spirit, okay? Okay, see you guys later. It's going to be your comforter. And he leaves. Now, did he give them like a little description of what the Holy Spirit is or what he does or anything like that? No. Do you like more descriptions from things? Yeah, we do as, parents, as adults, too. And so we, he, he didn't really give them all, so they're kind of like, is this a, this is a good thing? Because Jesus said he's going to give it to us, right? And does Jesus give good gifts? He does. But did they know really what it was? No. But we can trust God in what he provides, right? Yeah, three things about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, is part of, is, is with God and Jesus and is the part that comes, Jesus says, it's the comforter. So when you're having a really bad day, guess, guess what part? I mean, God the Father hears it and Jesus died for it, so you can hear it. But the Holy Spirit is the part that speaks inside of you and says, it's going to be okay. The Holy Spirit is the part that also says, hey, this is the right and this is the wrong. You know what I'm saying, guys? It's not a little cricket living in your ear. Don't believe that. Okay? It's the Holy Spirit speaking. And the Holy Spirit is that comforter that, that, that can comfort us when we need it. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that you give good gifts. Thank you, God, that even if we don't understand, that we can trust you. And I thank you, God, that we can trust you with the Holy Spirit, and, and the disciples could as well. Help us, dear Lord, um, to, to be comforted as we need to, and to be able to speak to you as we need to. And just thank you, God, that you love us and have plans for us. Thank you for Easter. In your name we pray. Amen. And as the kids go back, if you can stand and sing Glorious Day with us. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and Suffering anguish, despised and rejected, 
bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. The hands that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails from me. Good job. 
Thank you. We are at the end of the book of Luke. So we made it the whole way through. The last couple of verses of Luke 24. I'm going to start by reading verse 50. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them. And was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for Easter. Because it means that you won. You conquered death and the grave. That we can have life anew in you. And this is a message that you've given us to share with the world around us. I ask you, Lord, that the message might be written on our hearts this day. That we might leave here differently because we've encountered you. And we have our eyes on the the risen Lord who conquered. Thank you, dear God, for the hope there is in you. Come and speak to us. Get me behind the cross that we might encounter you and be changed by you. Help us not to be, not, not to be easily offended. But instead, Lord, allow you to poke those areas of our lives that need to be prodded to make us who you want us to be. Thank you that you love us enough still to, to nudge those, those parts of our lives that, that, are, that are sensitive, that, that need surrendered, and you haven't given up on us yet. May we be vulnerable to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love to laugh. I really do. One of the best things I think about the internet today is it reminds me that the disasters that I laugh about from my own life are not unique to my own life. I realized I wasn't the only person who tried to kick a a, a turkey at Thanksgiving and didn't thaw it to the morning of. (laughs) <laughs> doesn't work by the way, okay? Or, or tried to make a pie without any sugar in it or things like that. You look online and you realize lots of other people did this together. We can share in this disaster. We can laugh about it together. With that in mind, I was looking around for some of the different stories about Easter that would make me laugh. I thought I'd share a couple with you. One, the one person said, I'm a pastor and had a kidney stone attack one hour before the service. This isn't me, it's someone else. My pastor had a kidney stone attack one hour before the service. I ended up in the ER. Good news, 
Hashtag the stone rolled away. Ah, all right. I like that. Okay. There's another one. A Sunday school teacher asked the members of the class to write a sentence of what Easter means to me. One of the kids wrote this. Egg salad sandwiches for the next two weeks. One last one. Another pastor explained, I played Jesus one time for sunrise service, and the cross was in the top of a hill, a very huge hill. When it came time to get me off the cross, the guard that was supposed to catch me missed me, and I rolled down the hill in front of everyone. <laughs> so once I reached the bottom, I had to be dragged off like a dead deer by one Roman soldier and a shepherd. <laughs> It's easy to see why those kind of stories might make us laugh or, 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 or smile, especially after the kidney stone rolls away. But they're lighthearted, joyful moments. But it makes me wonder as I look at this passage, because I see the disciples leaving Jesus, going away from Jesus being taken from them and rejoicing. Why were they rejoicing? Jesus is there with them. He says, you can feel my hands. You can see how much I love you. I'm going to eat fish with you. You can see I'm alive. I'm here with you. This is great. And then that verse 50, and then as my son Titus would say, poof, he's gone. Okay? He's taken up to heaven in front of them. But then that verse 52 is in there. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They had just got Jesus back. He had risen from the dead. He was finally restored to them. They were excited. What are you going to do next, Jesus? We're going to follow you. Oh, you're gone. Huh. And, 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 and yet, how would we react? Wouldn't we be sad? Wouldn't we be confused? Shouldn't verse 52 say, Then the disciples entered into a time of mourning and sorrow. Shouldn't we be wondering how they were going to, shouldn't they be wondering how they were going to cope now that Jesus was no longer with them? Why didn't their fears overwhelm them like they did before? That's what I want to look at this morning. I, I look at the world around us, um, the church's role in the world and such. I see a lot of sorrow. I see a lot of grieving. I see a lot of loss. And, and, and yet what we experience is nothing like having Jesus finally with them again and being, poof, taken away in front of them. And yet the disciples left rejoicing, and we still seem to be mourning. What are we missing? This morning I want to take a look at the disciples to see why they were rejoicing, even when Jesus was taken from them. Because I think that's a challenge for us today. So come with me to the mount where Jesus rose into the sky. Hide with me in the bushes. Overhear the disciples whispering in excitement to one another. Going back to Jerusalem. Allow the Holy Spirit to bring you joy today too. First of all, I think they were joyful because they trusted the blessings of Jesus. What was Jesus doing, with, doing when he was taken from them? It says he was blessing them. And that's a key thing, is that they heard the blessings of Jesus and they trusted the blessings of Jesus more than how it felt and looked in the moment. I think they trusted the blessing of, of John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were so, not so, I would have told you, I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. They trusted that Jesus was coming back, and soon. They trusted the blessing of his word being true to them. The disciples trusted the unknown gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit's coming. It's going to be better than if I was there with you. And the disciples took Jesus at his word. They didn't understand the Holy Spirit. Folks, I'll tell you what. I have the Holy Spirit in me, and I still don't understand the Holy Spirit. I'm very grateful. I don't fully comprehend it, though. They didn't get it, but they trusted Jesus' blessing. 
and they went away in joy, rejoicing. The disciples knew that Jesus promised a greater blessing with the Holy Spirit than even being alone. It was beyond the, 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 pit of, the feeling of the pit, in the pit of their stomach. They bit into the apple of, of God's truth and found it to be fresh and juicy right to the very center. The disciples trusted the constant presence of Jesus. Jesus had told them, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with you. And they trusted that. Even though it felt like Jesus was gone, as we gather together, there he is with us. The early church writings said that, the, that when they had communion services and they broke the bread, there was always such excitement because Jesus was here with us again. They trusted that to be true. Why wouldn't you want to come to communion? They found more hope in Jesus being with them than the scariness of the guards who had just murdered Jesus and now might be looking for them also. Instead of living in fear, they rejoiced. I guess the question for us today is, do you trust, do we trust the blessings of God? He promised blessings to us as we belong to him. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. God has been faithful to you. Incredibly so. Regardless of what it feels like in this moment or felt like this last year, he has been faithful to you. He has sustained you. He has carried you. He has a hope for you. He can wipe away the past. He has given you great blessings. Do you trust his blessings? Or do you think that your own plans, your own schemes, your own pattern would be more fruitful, better, and smoother? I guess that's what faith is, isn't it? Faith is not believing in yourself, by the way. That's a dumb thing to do. I believe in myself. Who has let you down more than anyone else? Yourself, right? Strength's not enough. Power's not enough. My, my, my own self lets me down every time. Faith is not believing yourself. Faith is believing in the promises of God regardless how it looks right now. The blessings of God. And that faith brought, brought joy to the disciples and it can bring us joy today too. The disciples rejoiced because they were focused on the work they had yet to do. Last week, um, in, in last week's passage, Jesus both opened their eyes and gave them a command. He said, stay here and wait. Stay here and wait for the Holy Spirit of, to come. Don't go anywhere. Stay in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit's coming. And they knew that was the task they were called to do. When you know what you're called to do today, you don't have time to worry about tomorrow. Romans 12 says that we can know and we should know God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. And yet it's going to take giving up. It's going to take giving up my own agenda and my own plan in order to know what he wants me to do, to invest in that. E. Stanley Jones had experienced eight years of really hard, fruitful, but very hard ministry in India before his body was breaking down. He's a powerful missionary. His body was breaking down. He would still get up to preach all the time and, and would teach, but he would find himself collapsing. Just physically, mentally overwhelmed, collapsing again and again. He wasn't, he wasn't an old man by any means, but he was, he was doing ministry in India, and it was under the British rule at the time, and they were trying to get independence, and so he was trying to balance, how do I share this without the Western world? And they saw Christ as a part of the Western world, and just the heaviness of being a minister was weighing on him heavily. He realized that he was either going to have to, he was going to have to give up the ministry. He was going to have to return to America and work on the farm and hope that God might restore his mind. Then something happened. He was in prayer, and he heard what he always calls the voice. Are you, are you yourself ready for this work to which I have called you? Jones replied, no, Lord, I am done for. I have reached the end of my rope. The voice, God's voice replied, if you turn that over to me, 
and not worry about it. I will take care of it. Jones quickly replied, um, Lord, I closed the bargain right here. <laughs> it's like, I never heard of a better bargain in my life. And he said he arose from that moment changed. He said, suddenly, something happened. He said, I, I, had, I had life, abundant life, living inside me. And where he was collapsing before, he said, I would work all day, and into the night, late into the night, I would sleep, but I wouldn't feel like I not needed any sleep, because I knew the work I was called to do. I was just doing that, and God's grace was sufficient. It lasted through his life. It lasted through his life. Like he said when he was 86, he said, my body, he died when he was 86. He, um, he said, my body is still as, as strong as it was 40 years ago. Because he allowed, he got focused on the right thing. He knew what he was called to do and didn't do other stuff. Do you want to leave this place rejoicing this Easter? You got to know what God wants you to do. You got to commit to what is it you've called me to do, God, and that is what I will do, and I will do it well for your glory. Isn't it time to start, stop striving with your own energy and power and start allowing God to fill you up for what he has called you to do? God said, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart." Are you willing to seek after God with the same intensity that you watched political elections this last year? Or that you tried to see what was happening with the virus and looking for updates all the time? Are you willing to invest more in knowing God than those things? I want to know Him no matter what. Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and wonderful things you do not know. Isn't it time to, re to leave rejoicing because you're really willing to fully commit to what he would have you do and nothing else? The last reason the disciples rejoiced is because they knew that this physical life was not the end. There Jesus stood holding the keys of death in Hades. He had the keys of death and life right in front of them. He had conquered. And as disciples of Jesus, they did not need to fear anything. They were free because their, their master had the keys of death and life. And so it, it changed how they looked at the world. They felt the same way Paul expressed in Philippians 1. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I, if I am to go on living in the body... This will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain. And I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. The disciples rejoiced because they didn't have to fear life or death. They didn't have to fear anyone taking away their freedom. They were free in Christ. They had life in Christ no matter what came. Death meant life forever with Jesus. Even if they were captured and taken away, they had freedom in Christ. The disciples knew they had specific work to do, fruitful work, so they sat down to focus on the work they were called to do and left with joy because of it. Fast forward to 2020. Folks, the enemy snuck in here this last year. That fear, that worry, that panic. Maybe it was a fear and worry about my own life. Maybe it was a fear and worry about other people's lives around me. Maybe it was a fear that my rights and freedoms were being taken away. But somehow we allowed the media and politicians and family and friends to justify us living in fear and worry. They called it just being cautious. They said it was just being logical. They said it was just using our heads. But that fear that we allowed into our lives stole away the authority to obey God alone and say, what is it you want me to do, God? 
Rather than looking to Jesus as the one who kept, held the keys of death and life, we listened to others as they said we hold the keys of death and life by our actions, by what we wear as masks, by how we keep from others. Rather than looking to Jesus as the only one who grants freedom, we listened what others told us. We held the keys for freedom in our hands by how we voted and chose the government. The truth is this. Instead of proclaiming the freedom in Jesus, we got trapped in all kinds of fear. Instead of demonstrating the victory of Jesus over life and death, we got trapped in all kinds of fear. I think a mask is a good symbol of some of these fears. Some people say, you know what? I, I'm not going to wear a mask. I refuse to. I'm a, there's a fear of wearing a mask because that means my freedom is taken away. There's an overreach of the government. And, 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 and God is not a God who brings life. I refuse to wear a mask. Other people sat back and they lived in fear by wearing the mask. The, this is my freedom and my salvation. Anyone that doesn't wear a mask is evil and foolhardy. The problem is this. Both are living in fear. I'm not saying you can't wear a mask and, and, and not live in fear, but I think this last year, the Christian church missed it. I think the world was looking for a life and a hope when everyone else is terrified, and the Christian church said, yeah, we're scared too. Instead of saying, God, what would you have me do? one way or the other. We're called to be the witnesses, to carry it out to whoever's out there, fearlessly and boldly, and somewhere along the line, we stopped talking about the resurrection, the Easter. And we started saying, well, I'm, I'm scared this way, I'm scared this way. And we stopped carrying the message we were called to carry. Now, carrying the message might mean I go to talk to someone, I put the mask on, I talk to the next person, I take it off. Because what does it matter? My freedom is in Christ. But as we've made camps in the Christian world, one way or the other, we've missed out on saying, God, what would you have me do in these moments? And we let that fear get in there and steal away the witness we were supposed to have in Jesus. But here's the good news. The cross is enough. God loves second chances. The world is still asking, is there a hope of life and death? It didn't stop asking. And Jesus has not taken away the lampstand within our church. He still wants us to be the witness. The question is, are we willing to go and be fearless witnesses as he's called us to be? Different than the world around us on either side. Or are we going to continue to live whatever the world drives in that moment. If I am in Christ, I am invincible until his work with me is done. If I am in Christ, I am free no matter what any government does or tries to do. It doesn't matter virus or people or government or world situation. If I am in Christ, I am free to be fully his and obey what he would have me do. And that's the witness the world around us needs and is looking at you to see where the hope is. Romans 8 says it best. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him Graciously give us all things. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine? Nakedness, danger, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, neither death nor life, angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here's the challenge. God wants to fill you up with joy today. 
in such an amazing way that the world around you smells it on you and hears it from your voice. You, you, you got you to get rid of that fear and worry. You got to ask God, what is it you've asked me to do? You got to seek him and see him in the midst of this. Remember, like the disciples, that Jesus rose from the dead. He alone holds the keys of freedom and life and death. Choose to allow him to empower you for the work he's called you to do. Become the fearless witness he has always called you to be in him. And carry that witness boldly to the world around you. Dear God, I ask you, Lord, that you might write your words, not mine, in our hearts that we might ask you, what is it you'd have me do? And be the witnesses you've called us to be. You've given us the Holy Spirit, the mighty Holy Spirit. May, may we bear the witness well you've called us to bear, especially in the world that's listening so intently. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, we're going to sing a final song. Um, I encourage you, if, if God's speaking to your heart, feel free to come forward. I'd be glad to pray with you. Uh, lots of times I know in my life, I sit back and say, okay, Lord, yes, that's one thing I need to surrender again. Okay, yep, oh, there's fear there, yep. <laughs> okay, there's another thing. And, and, and I, I find myself at the altar either fit, uh, figuratively or um, literally all the time. So I encourage you also to, uh, as God's speaking to your heart, feel free, I'm glad to pray with you if you want to come forward, I'll pray with you. worship our king come let us bow at his feet he has done great things see what our savior has done see how his love overcomes he has done great has done great things. O hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. O God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. O Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, O oh God, you have done great things. You've been faithful through every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore, you have done great things. do it again for your promise is yes and amen you will do great things god you do great things oh hero of heaven you conquer the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all.
conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, O oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. O oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, O oh God. You have done great things. So last year for the benediction, um, it was just Connor and I doing it. We did the, he is risen, he is risen indeed. So even if you try a little bit, we should beat last year's volume, okay? So I'll say he is risen, re respond, he is risen indeed. I'll go louder, you go louder. And louder, dad always says to lift off the roof. So let's try it together. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen. Go in peace.